Okay, in the words of, uh, I'll paraphrase Porky, so saith the nice Zoom lady, so saith the flock. Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Ford Maryland. Uh, my name is Steve Hunt, and I will be hosting for this evening. Um, the reason I say it is a special episode is two reasons. Uh, the first reason we'll get to right away, then we'll get to the second one shortly thereafter. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to welcome in, and it is our honor to welcome back to the stage, returning champion, um, OG, as I like to call him, of the um, Ford Maryland crew, Mr. Jason Booms, who is, of course, creator and writer on Spartan Considerations, and I did not know this until I was doing the reading assignment, or maybe I just forgot all about it, former Wild Lake Village board member. Jason Booms, ladies and gentlemen. Jason, welcome to the show. What's up, man? Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, and, and thanks for having me back on this very special episode. And, and yes, I remember my uh, tenure of service of the Wild Lake Village Board very fondly. So it was uh, it was uh, pleasant to hear it and pleasant to read about that, uh, that uh, long storied uh, service to the community. <laughs> Well, well, it's always good to have you back. I don't think we've seen you since the award show. So uh, good good to have you in the house. And the second reason why this is a very special episode, and I'm sure those of you who are faithful viewers or listeners are wondering, what's Second Banana doing running the show tonight? What up with that? You know, where is the man himself? Where is my Bill Woodcock? Well, fear not, faithful Ford Marylanders. Bill Woodcock is in the house, and we're going to introduce him right now because Bill is shifting over from host of this show to guest. Why, you may ask? Well, simply this. Bill has a lot on his resume. He is a former village board member, a former party poobah, a former candidate for elective office, uh, author and creator of the 53 or 53 Beers on Tap, co-creator of this very fine program, this very fine podcast called Ford Maryland. And now that wasn't enough. He needed to add author to the equation. So he's just piling on at this point, folks. But you know what? He did what he did. And so he now has a new uh, book out. Um, I believe it's either released or about to be released. Bill can confirm on that one. And it's a very interesting read. It is, uh, we'll get into details shortly, but it is a uh, compilation and really him chronically his experience as both a blogger and a podcaster. But uh, in my view, it also, uh, serves as really a history of Howard County through the eyes of one of its longtime citizens. So without further ado, our guest for the evening, that's funny to say, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Woodcock. Bill, welcome to your podcast. <laughs> good evening, Steve, and, and good evening, Jason. And uh, first off, uh, thank you for having me on the show. I understand that the other co-host was being a genuine ass about asking me to be on the program. Uh, and I would like everyone out there in viewer and or listener land to know, um, you know, I, I know this episode may come across like, oh, great. It's going to be like, you know, uh, uh, you know, mental masturbation day on Forward Maryland. No, 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 no. Um, that's the 11th. Go on. That, <laughs> that is the 11th. <laughs> but uh, but but no, I, I don't know what Jason and Steve are, are, are asking. Uh, so uh, I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. And as Steve alluded to, uh, I have uh, taken the posts from the late lamented forward um, 53 beers on tap blog that ran from 2008 to 2019. And then again, briefly in 2020. And and uh, compiled um, about 700 of those posts into three different volumes. Uh, one book is a chronological order of those posts of maybe not the best of, but I would say the most emblematic of uh, called The Land of Melting Wings. And then the other one is a series of posts I wrote in 2022 chronicling my uh, family's uh, 60 plus year history in Howard County to date. And that book was is a much shorter volume, much more economical uh, for those of you looking to spend your ebook or hard book dollars. And uh, that's called Promises, Promises. And all of these volumes uh, will be out uh, by the end of May. 
which is in time to mark the 15th anniversary of my uh, involvement as a blogger and or podcaster. So uh, I hope that answers your original thoughts there, Steve. Hope that responds to what you had to say. And I'm really looking forward to answering questions. Well, thank you, Bill. It's it again. It, it's great to have you here. And th thank you. You you provided Jason and I advanced copies. Um, it, it the way it broke down made it made it very interesting for me because um, I I will say that I was you were years into uh, fifty three beers on tap before I started picking it up along with other blogs like you know Jason's over you know Spark Consideration and others. So uh, reading the early years was very fascinating and and, and also. Um, the, the history of the Woodcock family in Howard County, it, it really tracks with Howard County as far as how Howard County grew up and, and how we got to this thing called Columbia, et cetera. So let, let's talk about that first volume and, and, you know, some of the things that you pulled out of the Woodcock family history as it relates to Howard County that struck you as you were writing this. Sure, Steve. So, so Promises, Promises is about a 30, 35 page volume of uh, a very quick read. Um, and it talks about the uh, history of my family from when my grandfather, grandmother, and my dad moved to Howard County um, in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, all the way through the present day with myself and, and my children. And uh, what is really, you know, What's really startling when I wrote those blog posts and then when I went back a year later and compiled those is just the gross amount of change that has occurred in the community. Uh, it is safe to say that about 90, I mean, Howard County was about 2% of its size when my family moved here. It was maybe about 7,000 residents uh, total in the entire county and of those people when you think about how many of those people were still here after 70 years uh still alive uh that's an extraordinarily small number now probably i'm guessing like the number of those original families that were there 70 years ago is still there i'm still guessing it's probably still about seven thousand eight thousand people but Still, that is a very small percentage of what Howard County is today. Imagine, you know, where there was no Columbia. Imagine where 29 was two lanes. Imagine Route 103 being dirt road from Meadow Ridge mm -hmm. Road all the way to where it intersected with 29. Uh, imagine there being uh, two high schools in the county which is what there was in 19 in 1956. Um, you know, the story is one of post-war America, you mm -hmm. know, of people going out to find opportunity. Uh, first, the working class whites, the, the people who fought the Second World War and the people who supported those people at home, which is where my, my family falls into. Uh, then it turns into, um, you know, growth and the story of Columbia, which, you know, as we all know, they started to build buy land around 1963 and the town was founded in 67. Um, then the rapid growth of that town, its prominence in um, local politics and the resistance of the longstanding Howard Countyans against Columbia influence which unfortunately also turned into by association uh, resistance against racial equity and justice. Uh, so those were the 70s, the 80s brought growth, economic hard times to Howard County, but the industry of Howard County became land use mm -hmm. as the county grew, grew exponentially. And what happened was is that those, uh, those suburbs around Columbia became conservative and they started to vote Republican in the late eighties and, and through the nineties, uh, turned back to Democrat again in the late nineties and then have been that way pretty much ever since. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it really, the, the, the key message and what the key takeaway I want the, I want the, uh, the reader to get 
is the how how Howard County's history over these 70 years really um, is the story of suburban America and the creation of the suburban environment, the creation of the suburban milieu, so to speak, uh, and and how it's developed an edge over time. And yeah, there are a lot of great personal stories and anecdotes and cool things in there that'll hopefully uh, keep the reader's interest. Yeah, I'm sure some of your uh, family members that they were alive today, uh, you, you were uh, quite open and honest about their attitudes towards things like race, uh, and, and so forth back back oh, in the my, day. So my, um, my family was my family was amazingly racist. <laughs> I mean, as I grew up, I mean, it was it was incredible, uh, you know. And I, I I'll just mention, I mean, one thing that I write in the book is how about how when my my grandfather died in 1958, you know, they wanted to make sure that he was in Meadowridge Cemetery in the in the whites only section. And that same section of Meadow Ridge Memorial Park was, Mar is, I mean, it was the whites only section. And, you know, Columbia, I mean, people think Howard County, people think this liberal progressive oasis, but it wasn't always that. Well, that yeah, that was funny, and, and we will certainly get into Columbia because uh, there was a lot in your book about Columbia, and and you actually did uh, a very interesting Marvel style what if post about what if Columbia never existed. So, but I'm sure we'll be talking about that a lot. Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you for the next uh, question. Yeah, thanks, Steve. A couple questions actually. Um, first, Bill, can you talk a little bit about why you chose the title "Land of Melting Wings"? Yes. So uh, Howard County has aspired ever since, um, really ever since I, I, I've, I've lived here, which is almost my entire life. It's aspired to be an exceptional place. It's aspired to be something that is a step beyond. It's aspired to be, much like what its largest city claims to be, is the next America. But what I feel and as my posts have gone later into, into its lifetime of the blog, I believe I start to express this, is Howard County is beginning to become beset by all the problems and unfortunately all the attitudes that beset every other suburb in America. Um, you know, uh, inner, you know cl um, classism, uh, racism, misogyny. Every social ill that exists in any other um, suburb in the country exists in Howard County. At the same time, a lot of my posts are about development. And as you, could, and as you know, uh, I've been very much pro-growth, pro-development, pro-business uh, person in terms of, say, the, the uh, development of downtown Columbia per se. Uh, and you know, growing a vibrant uh, town center in Columbia so that we can attract more attractions and transportation and some other cool uh, features that a, a mature town should have. I believe that where we are right now, we really stand at a cross at a, an inflection point where, you know, we have a lot of bread and circuses here, but we, we, we run the risk of looking indistinguishable, indistinguishable from um, between Columbia and say Bethesda or downtown Silver Spring or Alexandria, you know, or Leesburg, you know, places where they're all cool and they all have some neat and, you know, distinguishing characteristics, but they don't necessarily take, you know, make a kid who grew up there say, well, I grew up in so-and-so place and it was special because X. Um, that's why I called it that because, you know, it has been aspirational. It had the town, the, the city or the, the town, I should say, the county has been Icarus-like, but I do see a little bit, I do see some wax melting mm -hmm. and I do see the future choices, and I mean, when I say future, I mean maybe next five to 10 years worth of choices as really being defining as to whether or not, you know, my children, you know, Steve, I know you also have kids, 
you know, grow up in Howard County, you know, who grew up in Howard County say, this was a special place to live. So there's why the title. I do have one follow-up question to that, because I think we've, we've already touched upon the theme, but I want to pull on the red thread a little bit more. Um, so you talked about the story of, uh, Howard County is uh, the story miniature of the story of suburban America. And you mm -hmm. talk about the aspirational element of what we're trying to do, yet we're beset by all of these issues, which, which make us, some may say, a non-Shangri-La, which I, I read very recently in someone's uh, blog post. Um, but let's fast forward a minute. You talked about five or 10 years. Uh, let's go to 2098. Uh, a, a sentient AI is busy pulling together the history of Howard County. They're looking at 2008 through 2023. Um, underneath the broad heading of uh, the story of suburban America, are there two or three threads you'd really like that, that sentient AI to pull out to, to get the story right? I think the two are so, so I think that, well, if we're looking that far in the future, here would be the threads I would, I would hope that. I just want to make sure that, I just want to make sure that by 2098, we're all gone. So we're going to be very reliant on this. Yeah. Thing. Now, what if it's yeah, maybe how, like a cyborg how nine, a sort of robot, but other than I, that. I am picturing some like, like, like Rosie from the Jetsons right now. <laughs> so what, what Rosie would, would pull wondering. out would be um, we did the best we could with, with downtown Columbia. I mean, the, there's so much that I write in the, in the book and in the posts about the entire downtown planning process. I mean, I, I think literally over at least a decade, I'm writing about downtown Columbia planning. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that we did the best we could during that time. There have been things that have gone after since then, Jason, and I'm not going to go down that road right now, but we did the best that we could. Mm -hmm. Secondly, was that despite everything that everybody else says, mm -hmm. land use in Howard County is king. There have been some lot, lots of civic bloodshed and lots of civic hand wringing about education issues, public safety issues. Um, racial equity issues. But at the end of the day, it all is coming down to land use and property management. And that those discussions are what drives the discussions um, on those other topics. The third thread that I would I would advocate is that is that there is a lot there was a lot of failure, I'm trying to be very careful with my words here. There was a lot of failure to do the best thing. Um, and a lot of that, you know, I write also, I mean, you know, guys, we're in the middle of a Columbia election season, as we all know. When did I start writing in the blog about CAs and its CA board and its weirdness? <laughs> I believe that was about four months into when I started the blog. That was in 2008. We're 15 years later. And I'm sure if you talk to somebody who's been around here longer than I have, it had been going on for decades before. Yet we still act now like, oh my God, the CA board of directors has problems. They got issues. They've always had issues. Our CA board members have always had issues. Our county council has always had issues. Our county executive, God bless whoever may be in that seat, has issues. Our school board, damn sure has issues. So unfortunately, you know, Mr. You know, unfortunately, AI editor, we were humans and we did not always do the right thing. I, I think they might be very confused by, well, he, this person wrote an article called CA Rethinking Itself, but it was published on October 30th, 2013. <laughs> what changed over 10 years? <laughs> but, That's um, just it. Nothing. And what's <laughs> shameful is that it's some of the same people who are still on that board. Mm -hmm. And they show up to these meetings every other week and they talk about the same thing year in, year out decade in, decade out, and, and the ball barely moves between the 45s. Yeah, 
Well, let me ask you this, Bill, just to follow up about the CA board, since we're on the subject, you know, in one of your posts, one of the things you said that needed to be changed was uh, the demographics of the CA board. Uh, it, it seemed to be um, basically a combination of a certain age and a certain race. Um, I'll try to be nice and not. <laughs> well, now that, now that two of the three of us are clear, near there, uh, Steve, old white men. Um, Okay, so and so you you've said that, and and I don't see where that's changed. You know, there was an effort to, in some people's minds, change that with the movement lovingly referred to as the uh, was the Rouse Project. Uh, you know, one of their goals was to change it, and and I think we can say that that project uh, didn't go certainly the way <laughs> I think they wanted it to. Um, do you think there should be another effort, not maybe similar to what they tried to do, but to bring more diversity to the CA board um, of directors and the village boards? Well, the election season is already underway. So, I mean, I think we are seeing that in some of the villages where there is a, uh, you know, there's a slate that's more loosely uh, um, supported by the uh, uh, power central in Howard County uh, running against uh, incumbent or, or uh, you know, other candidates who the incumbent board members who may be retiring or supporting. Um, I, I, I do in, in general support efforts to diversify the CA board. Um, you know, uh, Jason well knows because he and I talked about this a lot on this podcast during the heyday of the Rouse Project. Um, there have been many, there were many very valid and wonderful candidates who ran under that banner and some who you just had to say WTF to, um, <laughs> you know, it was not a one size fits all, um, you know, uh, not everybody, I supported the Rouse Project candidate for my village two years ago, um, but I'm not supporting uh, the person who the you know, power elite are supporting uh, this year in Oakland Mills. And that, and, and both the people who are candidates are friends. So it really, to me, it really does bend on experience and mm -hmm. capability. But, you know, the, you know, what we really do have to have is a concerted effort. We, we need to have an effort to diversify the board but to diversify it in a gentle way. The largest knock against this Rouse project was the whole funding of it and who was behind it and who was supporting it. And, you know, um, I, I, I put a Facebook post up today that said, it's not cool if you're a charitable person and you say kind things and you talk about how how hard your life has been, and then you turn around for the other 95% of your life and be a jerk. Uh, same thing here. It's not cool to run under the banner of equity, diversity, inclusion, and then be, uh, you know, be supported by interests that actively work to subvert those things. You know, Howard County can do better and Columbia can do better than the bare minimum of affordable housing for its for its developments. It just can. Um, you know, Howard County should have the game open for development. You know, what's wrong with using more than one engineering firm to assess uh, to assess a uh, proposed development in Howard County? You know, so yes, I, I do believe that more DEI is important on the CA board. But DEI, that still is person-focused as opposed to corporation-focused. Gotcha. And, and by the way, to, to those of you uh, watching or listening, this, this conversation may end up all over the place. You, we were texting earlier, Jason and I both have a ton of questions, but we're not going to go into our ton of questions because we were trying to keep this to an hour or so. Uh, but you'll have to forgive us in advance because uh, when you when you get an opportunity to read this book, you'll you'll have a lot of questions too. So uh, we'll we'll do the best we can, but uh, we'll be bouncing back and forth. And with that, I'm going to bounce back over to Jason uh, with the next question for you, Bill. Uh, thanks. And uh, and speaking of the issue of uh, Columbia leadership and diversity, 
Uh, Bill, I see you wrote on that, that exact topic on July 24th, 2010. So I cannot early. dodge a damn thing on this, can I? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I, I want to take it in a slightly different direction. Obviously, we can spend a ton of time uh, on any one of these the subtopics we're going to bring up today. But just overall, I would coming from a writer's perspective, um, was there any post that stood out to you as being the most personal one? Maybe when you grappled with posting yourself because you didn't know if you felt like necessarily sharing it with the readership or it was just a topic that was very sensitive to you. There were a few of those, um, you know, uh, I, I during the early years of the blog, uh, early to mid years, I was going through my separation and divorce. And so although I do not think I necessarily did a Phil Collins and wrote a divor divorce post. Uh, did. I can tell. Uh, did I? You did not, but I mean, no. I think that you, there was it was alluded to perhaps once or twice, maybe. Yeah, but but there definitely was an acerbic quality, an extra acerbic quality to my post during that time. Which now that I go back and I read the totality, I go, oh, that's what was on my mind during that time. Um, I would say, actually, Jason, the entire process of writing the blog, you know, um, of course, I have a private life, but my attitude was that my life was an open book. Mm -hmm. And this is who I am. Uh, I felt like it was a great uh, way to, you know, to just have a community conversation and to portray myself as who I am, an imperfect person living in an imperfect world. Um, I, I, I found that quality, I found that uh, cathartic and, and beneficial to being able to tell the stories that I was telling through the blog. Were there any posts that you regretted posting? Uh, <laughs> uh, not that are not in the book, uh, <laughs> but no, there, there actually were two. Uh, there actually were two, and and literally, I don't think what I don't think either of them made it into the book. Uh, there was one, no. In fact, there was one. There was only one that I ever erased, mm -hmm. uh, straight mm -hmm. on, and that's where I said some very unkind things about a fellow blogger uh, in the county, and um, you know, I I thought better of it, and about twelve hours later, I just took that one straight out. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I would say, uh, the one that I could say that's in the book that, you know, I put it in there, but then it was like, you know, um, you know, I wished I hadn't have written it was the post council bill nine post mm. uh, about uh, John Weinstein's troubles with his votes and, you know, how he was kind of pilloried for all of that. I kind of felt like, you know, whereas I think a strength of the blog was giving people that under the hood look at, you know, this is what, you know, this is what policymaking is like. This is what serving an office is like. This is what, um, you know, uh, this is what these people have to go through. And even though at the time John was fine with, me telling that whole story. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I maybe maybe shared more than what was necessary to tell the story to the audience. I don't think I said anything inappropriate. I certainly didn't say anything mean or unkind or untrue. But I, I think uh, it was there was there was a theme of overkill, uh, and and that that probably didn't need to that probably didn't need to go there. I just have one more note, and I'll kick it back to Steve. Um, the, the, the one thing I liked, um, in particular, where some additional context would be necessary. Well, number one, I like the fact that you included your original language. So it wasn't something that we were seeing, something that's through the prism of 2023, necessarily. It's like mm -hmm. the words on the page as they're written. And you can see that just talking about uh, same-sex marriage as opposed to marriage equality. This is just the terminology that was used during the time. Seeing the evolution of some of the things that you covered was was always fun. Some years there'd be a lot of interest in uh, writing about gaming, for example, or speed mm -hmm. cameras, or or issues that you know may not appear to be 
you know, given what we as a nation have experienced, <laughs> like, my God. In fact, there was one you wrote in 2012 where you sort of talked about, will 2012 be the new 1968 uh, with all of the, the potential trouble that portended? And now 2012 looks like a walk in the park compared to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'd like to have that one back. <laughs> but uh, just to re uh, wrap up the thought, I do like the fact that you did include, um, you know, what really happened ah. in some situations <laughs> where you want to like, oh, and by the way, this is what took place. I think that really rounded out a lot of those stories nicely. Yeah, that was a feature I wanted to put in there, uh, you know, about, you know, just that, you know, and here's what happened. I mean, it's amazing that, like, for example, the state of Maryland first talked about some sort of legalization of marijuana in 2013. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And then, like you mentioned, Jason, all the posts about casino gaming and whether or not to put a casino at the airport or at Arundel Mills. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, the whole kerfuffle about <coughs> that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I, you, I've forgotten so many of these things that were big time debates back then. But you know, that the outcomes have shaped the Maryland we live in now. Yeah, yeah uh, Jason, that was one of my notes as well. I, I really enjoyed the what really happened set uh, section of, of some of these posts although bill i will note while howard county did not get winery we got breweries and distilleries <laughs> indeed we have <laughs> no damn winery i don't understand why we're so exceptional <laughs> um want to talk about it you know jason asked a question earlier about posts that that resonated uh with with that maybe resonated with you i could i can give you three that resonated with me and you can pick any of these um you know, your call, but they really struck me. Uh, the first one was the one about uh, the Knights, Rick and Ricky Knight. Um, the second one was, quite frankly, uh, surrounding the death of Dennis Lane and, and, and the fallout from that. And then the third was the um, shooting at the Columbia Mall and, and how you were wondering, you know, worried about your family and trying to get in touch with them and make sure everybody was okay. Th those three, just from a, a family standpoint and just... I was not reading blogs in Howard County at the time of Dennis Lane. I came along after he was gone, or at least he wasn't as prolific. And I think I might've started reading around the time of his uh, death, but uh, that one really struck me as well. So, you know, talk about any of those, or if there's another one that, that struck you as you originally wrote it and, or, you know, reread it as part of this well, uh, project. I'll, I'll talk very briefly about all three. Uh, so the nights, uh, that was the first time I had ever used my, and you said, and Steve, you, you gave a, a short, you know, community bio of the things I've done with Howard County, but that was the first time that I've kind of blurred, um, who I am as a civic person with personal life and, uh, you know, just the story of that family and, and, uh, and the young man's struggle. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that actually was also a post where I really did a lot of hand wringing before posting and I did. And, uh, you know, the two days after I wrote that blog, when I was at football practice, people started saying that, Hey, Bill, I saw that blog post you wrote. Thank you so much for doing that. So that just felt terrific. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Columbia mall shooting uh touch wood folks um we have not had that much of the specter of gun violence touch us in howard county um you look at so many other communities where that thing hits and you look at the demographics and what howard county is and you're like and i kind of think my god i mean we're we're i mean we're you know we're flirting we're living with how we're playing with house money uh, but this was an occasion where it did, and it just goes to show that, you know, uh, we are not immune from those problems. And then the Dennis Lane issue. I mean, I'd actually met Dennis Lane in 1990 uh, when mm -hmm. I was with the Young Democrats of Howard County, and, and he helped me do a roast for a local Democratic activist. Um, you know, just... Uh, a larger than life, um, generally happy man, uh, you know, was not a perfect man by any means. Um, but, uh, you know, 
who who thinks of that when you go to bed, you know, on a, on a Thursday night that you're not going to live to see Friday noon and what happens? You know, it, it gives one an appreciation to, you know, to live your life with meaning and that, you know, you know, we're, we're you know, I have a saying, you know, we're all guaranteed eight and a half minutes, you know, <laughs> in case some cataclysm wipes out the sun, we have eight and a half minutes to, uh, to live. And so don't you want that last thing you do with whoever you're doing it with, be it a friend, lover, colleague, work person, buddy, child, whoever, don't you want that to be meaningful? And, um, you know, to me, that was Dennis. He did live a, a meaningful life and it was ended tragically, but uh, it, it does help prove a lesson to me to continue to do that. Sometimes I haven't been successful at it, but I try. Well, that's, that's awesome. Appreciate that. And, and speaking of Dennis, before I uh, flip back over to my, my partner here, um, you know, obviously, you know, famous for his blog, inspired a lot of folks. I, I've, I've heard Dennis Lane stories from folks like you, from, you know, Tom Cole as he was writing Hoko Rising, uh, Bill Santos over Columbia Compass, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you, you talked a lot about the decline of just local reporting, whether it's in the media or blogs. Uh, by the way, uh, the term fish rap came up quite often. <laughs> you, you might want to explain that one, sir. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, you I want to ask a question and reason why I brought up Dennis Lane is, you know, what do you think he would think of where things stand today? You know, in your very last post uh, that you wrote, that's the very last entry in this book, you talk about how there's maybe four blogs out there. And, and I mean, you started talking about the decline of local media in 2008 in one of your earlier posts. What do you think, you know, he would think of where we've gone and what do you think about uh, where we've gone as far as local reporting, storytelling, etc. Well, I, I am not the foremost expert on Dennis Lane, but I would think that Dennis Lane would say that there's a whole lot of whining going on about a whole lot of nothing. Uh, that would be my long and short on where Dennis would be about the state of the county right now. Uh, how I feel about local media is that um, it is woefully inadequate. Um, we really do not get any local coverage from any of the major news mag and newspapers here. The Howard County Sun and the Sunday Sun is a joke. It's four pages and it's all rehashes from the Columbia Flyer or Howard County Times. Uh, I believe, you know, community association, village or, you know, uh, homeowners association newsletters do a better job of doing local events. Uh, than, the, than the Baltimore Sun or Washington Post does. Um, you know, any coverage of local events that goes on out here are, is one, accidental, and two, biased. I mean, look at what happened very recently with the governor coming out to talk about the library. I mean, that was, you know, that was a PR piece. I mm -hmm. mean, and cool, we're getting a new library in downtown Columbia. That's awesome. But if you look at the local media's, uh, the, the Baltimore Sun's coverage of that, it was, yay, the governor came out and announced that there's going to be this huge local library. You know, um, fair question to ask about the library is, you know, uh, is the current central near the end of its useful life? Because that, that bad boy was just renovated not 10 years ago. Uh, you know, and I'm not advocating that we don't have a new central library. I, I think maybe that we should. But, you know, how did that, how did all that funding come about? How are we spending our dollars? What are our other choices? You know, that richness of community discussion, we don't have anymore. We, we have community discussions that seem to be based around obeisance to one political party or the other. Uh, and, and, and obeisance to one of the political parties isn't even worth talking about because the ones on the right are bug nuts insane. That being <laughs> said, the ones on the left are, are close to becoming a, a cult of personality. You know, Steve, you mentioned my last blog post. Um, there's a very, uh, I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit. For those of you listening, I'm patting myself on the back. 
there's a thing I say right at the very end, the only progress that has ever happened has come through dissent. Hmm. Think about it. Is that not true? But, you know, 10, 15 years ago, when we had a very rich blogiverse, we did have people who contrasted and conflicted in their ways of thinking. Um, you know, we had a richness of community discussions. I mean, remember the blog parties where we used to have 60, 80 people show up, you know, just talking stuff about what Howard County is and what it could be. We don't do that anymore. I don't know of any forum where anybody in this county talks about that anymore. And whatever forums they may claim to be are carefully curated and guided by, by county leadership in one form or fashion. You know, we need to find a way to provide for not an independent voice, but a independent fountain of ideas to form, a spring to form and then bubble up. And we don't have that. That's uh, good stuff. Jason, you got him, man. Yeah, thanks. I, I do want to stay on the theme of the media for a, a moment uh, because sprinkled throughout uh, your books, um, obviously, you, you know a ton of people in the community. You've been here. You've had a chance to speak to a number of activists, media figures. Was there one um, media personality, analyst, journalist, since you started writing the blog? So I'll put in that 20, 2008 time frame to the current date. Is, is there one reporter who really got Howard County, in your mind, the best in terms of being in touch with what's going on in, in our communities? There are two. Uh, Lindsay McPherson, who mm. used to write for the Howard County Times and Flyer, and now I believe is with Roll Call. And yeah, I think Chris Hill, yeah. And, Chris, and yeah, I think she's with the Hill now. And Christian Davenport who used to write for the Washington Post and now uh, is on NASA TV and uh, does a lot of space coverage. Um, they, they had Howard County nailed. Uh, there are other, there have been other good reporters during the time. Larry Carson is one that comes to mind. He has Columbia roots. Lynn Lazarix, another one, you know, also a guy who knows all sorts of old school Columbia and Howard County people. Uh, but those two truly, truly stand out. Another one I'll mention will be Tom Graham, uh, the former editor of, of the Howard County Times, who then worked for the Post. Um, you know, ironically, Mary Kay Sigety's um, husband. Um, you know, um, you know, all all very bright, all very capable news people. Um several directions I could go in, but let's ask one more question and then kick it back to, to Steve uh, at this point. Um, you touched upon sort of the dialogue that was taking place a bit more in, in, in the blogger community. And my, my question isn't so much focused on that, uh, largely because I never attended those events, so I have no idea what the hell was going on. And I'm, <laughs> feuding, I'm feuding with half of those people now, but then we stay in touch. Uh, but um, one thing that I found really interesting, not only was there, um, you know, th the shift in the issues you would cover over time as things came up, whether it was dredging Lake Elkhorn or the fire. Oh my God, they dredged that lake. <laughs> <laughs> the, fi the fire tax, the rain tax. Oh yeah. The James I've Taylor tax. Fire, I've seen rains. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, there we go. But but the one thing I did notice is if you look back at your writing, uh, particularly early on, uh, there was, I would say, more of uh, an emphasis on bipartisanship, if you want to call it that, or more of a willingness to uh, talk about, you know, some of what we would refer to as, you know, the good R's way back in the day, the ones you could, you know, negotiate with, um, whatever that's worth now. Uh, what is it that changed about, was it, was, was it you who changed? I hate using the word progressive, but did you become more progressive? Did the, the Republican party become something so unrecognizable that it was literally them moving away from you? What happened to the tone of the writing where you see less of that, uh, bipartisan theme happening? Oh, well, that's a fantastic question. And, uh, I'll offer this answer. 
Remember, I started writing that blog in 2008. Remember, the national election was Obama McCain. Remember that that was also the germination of the seed where it was okay for people on the right to start talking about people who didn't look like them and didn't act like them and didn't talk like them. You know, 2012, there was a little bit more of that tinge, but not so much nationally. But in Howard County, I think you saw it more because there is a African-American county council member, Calvin Ball, who started to stand above, you know, head and shoulders above the others, uh, you know, was making not a huge secret of his own aspirations. And then who was the other preeminent Democrat at that time? Courtney Watson, a very capable, very intelligent female candidate. So, you know, the misogynists and the racists both had their day. And then you go to that local election of 2014, where I believe Courtney was treated horribly as a human being uh, by by the by Alan Kittleman and by the people on his campaign from his campaign chair on down, uh, and and he won. Uh, he tried to portray himself as a uniter, not a divider, in the Bushian tradition. That failed miserably, and so in came Calvin Ball uh, in 2018. So. We were probably locally a few years ahead of the Trumpian curve without there being any, you know, Trumpian cult of personality leader of that ilk or of that mindset uh, to lead them. Um, We probably did not. I, I don't think we knew that at the time. But when I go back and I go through those posts, that's what do I see? So how did that affect my own change? Um, uh, I, I, I can only react with intolerance with more intolerance. I cannot, I cannot brook somebody who has a closed mind, who, you know, like I said, these sorts of people who talk about, look at me, I've had all this hardship. Oh yeah, by the way, let's now make fun of so-and-so on the internet. That's funny. Ha 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 ha. Aren't I clever? You know, no one wants to see that trash. And yet here, you know, here we are in the, one of the wealthiest counties, the most well-educated counties in the country. And that trash is abounding, you know, and, and it's still abounding. So, no, I, I, I can't play that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm willing to reach out to the other side as long as the other side's willing to reach out to me. But if they're going to, you know, if they're going to do the little fuzzy pull to your hand away and go, hey, thing, you know, then probably I'm going to ball my fist up and slug them right between the eyes. <laughs> Good well, right, I, it's funny, I, uh, Jason, you asked a, a similar question to, to the one I was going to ask, and that was, you know, how, Bill, you've changed over the years. Not only I was asking, I was going to ask, and I won't go too deep into this since you, you know, Jason put the question out there as far as perspective, but as far as people, there were a number of people, names that we're all familiar with, I won't name them here, you'll have to read it in the book, as they say, of folks you like endorsed way back when, that today, (laughs) there's no shot you would give them the time of day, I was shocked at some of the people you were like, oh yeah, (laughs) this guy's doing a great thing with this new city alliance. I'm like, is this the same Bill Woodcock? Cause that guy is getting no love from Bill right now. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, Steve, I am a man of goodwill and also that goodwill is, can be squandered. And when that goodwill reserve runs to zero, you are SOL. Uh, and that that's kind of how I feel about a lot of our elected officials and, and civic leaders. Uh, yeah, I, I, I recognize who you're talking about there. Um, I will say this. I do not. And I've reread all those posts. I do. I stand by every single one of those endorsements as I gave them when I gave them. It was the best I had with the information I had at the time. Um, but. You know, do I feel that some of those people have squandered uh, public goodwill? And forget my goodwill for a second, public goodwill. Yeah, I think they have. Um, you know, um, I, you know, I'm not going to mince much of a word about it. I mean, I think there's a lot of civic sellout 
that goes on in Howard County lately. And I'm not sure why we're there. You know, what is so enticing about our, uh, our uh, development overlords who shall go nameless that uh, they, they, uh, they bring everybody in under their spell and there's one or two elected officials who kind of go, well, wait a minute. And then everybody else tells them to just shut up and sit in the corner and mind their business. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that as I was writing toward, you know, towards the end of my blog, I'm talking about this current generation of Howard County elected officials. I still think there are some very, very bright people in there. Uh, what I would urge them to do is what I've been urging people to do since 2008. Think critically and think creatively. And, you know, we have a terrific environment in which to perform really cool experiments of how government can help lead, bring people to opportunity here. Let's do that stuff. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I know we're, we're getting down to it. I don't want to go too, too deep. Like I said, we could go for a while. By the way, one of my shocker moments, and maybe, Jason, maybe if you have a shocker moment that you want to talk about that Bill can address, my shocker moment was once upon a time, Bill, you were heavily involved in the Howard County Citizens Association, or HCCA. <laughs> I, I, was I, cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I, I can't reconcile what it is now and what it's been for a while to an organization that once upon a time you were an active part of. I, that, that was the, if you wanted, there were several head explosion moments. That was one when I saw that. I don't know, Jason, if you had something that totally, blew you away but that one just that would just hit because being in north laurel that one just hit me upside the head man <laughs> yeah, being re being reminded of that and uh the, the one title that really stood out for me although in context it means something differently and, and bill may remember this very well uh remember superfoos <laughs> yes <laughs> but yeah you know, just you know but within the context of that she would have to do all these things and be all these things to all these people not necessarily that she was in fact running around in a cape at the time although we can't disprove it either but uh but i do think no. it really stood out <laughs> as an article it was like well okay this is this is where howard county was at the time with education but but i did include the post where i turned I did include the post where I did the heel turn on Renee Foo. <laughs> and I went from being her friend, I went from being her crypto to being her general Zod. <laughs> and, and, and you know what they have to do, Steve. Kneel before Zod. Before Zod. <laughs> Damn straight, brother. So, so that was one thing. And the HCCA thing, you know, when I was president of HCCA, HCCA was pro mixed use. Um, you know, Lloyd Knowles was was on the board of, of HCCA. Um, you know, um, they they had just um, kind of stopped. You know, it, this was in the discussions behind Maple Lawn and the mm. building of Maple Lawn. This was in the discussions. You know, we HCCA helped write the original senior housing ordinance for Howard County. You know, the 55 and over senior housing that, you know, we can all live in now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it used to be a much more progressive type of organization that, you know, and when I say progressive, you know, I mean, believe in possibility, mm -hmm. you know, believe that the, things can be different. You know, you just don't have to adhere to the status quo, and you sure as hell don't have to go backwards. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it was cool to do at the time. Now I kind of look at some of those things and I go, oi, you know, but I also wrote blog posts about a nonprofit I started when I was in college called the Maryland Student Legislature. And 35 years later, that thing is still running. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm very happy about being part of that organization, being part of it over the years. Most importantly, I'm, I'm happy to have been, you know, a, a resident, a, uh, uh, a landed squire of the gentry. And uh, like I say in, in the book, you know, uh, father of two, husband of one so far. Um, and, uh, you know, well, you know, and, and, uh, living life here.
Yeah, by, by the way, nice, nice tie into the ACCA and Maple Lawn because the individual who was central to the referendum effort on Maple Lawn is now like on the board of the ACCA who was in favor of Maple Lawn. So right. go figure. Uh, Jason, uh, as we wrap this thing down, uh, please. <laughs> I, think I, I do have one more question because this is one of the themes that we saw articulated throughout, I think, the history of, of, of the blog. And that's just back to basics, talking about the villages. And, and Bill, you had a propensity, I think more than most, to talk about the villages, not in a east-west perspective, which is easy enough to do, or even a north-south perspective, which I guess is technically possible. Uh, but you would talk about them as sort of being the inner and outer villages. Um, so if, if Bill Woodcock from 2023 were to go back in time, uh, abduct Bill Woodcock of 2008 and take you to the present day, are there any villages you'd look around and say, wow, they really got their stuff together over the past 15 years and things turned around nicely? Or the other side of the coin, are there any villages you'd be like, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. And I could I could think of one that Bill took some very nice uh, shots at in some of his earlier posts. And I'm wondering what he might think about that particular <laughs> village, Bill. <laughs> I would say that Wild Lake got it right-ish. Yeah. That would be the one. You got him. <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah. I would say that um, Longreach and Oakland Mills are anywhere between incomplete to dude 2008 me. Oh my God. <laughs> Check this stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, great people in both villages you know friends of mine people who are working really really hard but um you know to your point jason about those inner villages you know there also happen to be the older ones and they happen to be the ones that you know have the you know have the uh lowest per capita income lowest household income uh lowest education level you know least power and uh and you know um Wild Lake had some very good things happen for it. Um, I know there's been trying. I know Ken Allman, Alan Kittleman, Calvin Ball have all tried to do different things with Long Reach and, and Oakland Mills, but only with middling effect. And I, I, again, I don't think that that's unlike what when you look at other parts of the state, other parts of this, of this region, um, you know, you can't find you know, success stories about where, where uh, communities with those demographics, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, develop um, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in the manner in which the residents would maybe like. And I just want to say, I, I think your coverage uh, of the villages, it, it's, it, it was very gripping. It really told a great story. Uh, I mean, just being able to go over time, see the evolution of the villages, uh, of the communities themselves. So I, I do appreciate the fact that you you spend so much time in telling those stories. Uh, so I just want to say I really greatly appreciated your your thoughtful coverage of uh, Columbia generally and Howard County, you know, more broadly over that period of time. It's it's my pleasure. I mean, it was one 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 area in which I think my blog made a difference. Well, Bill, I'm going to give you for my last question a, an opportunity for a bit of a shout out. Um, you know, uh, actually, I'm going to ask two questions. My first was a little on the silly side. Are there in existence any Howard F. and County T-shirts? <laughs> Not sure. They may have been <laughs> donated, but I know I still have a sweatshirt. Um, you know, um, I have to look. I don't okay. think so. All right. So that that's my silly question. But as far as shout outs, you talked about some life influences and, and dedications and then some writing influences. And you talked about and, and you can talk about the significance of Will, Christine, Jen and Claire on the on the life side. And then as far as writing a uh, Metchkin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Vonnegut, um, Michener and Russer as far as writing influences. Uh, by the way, I'm a huge Tim Russer guy, so you, you can never go wrong with uh, Florida, Florida, Florida. So uh, any shout out you want to any of those individuals or anybody else you want to acknowledge or anything else? 
Well, well, my, my, you know, Steve, like I said, my personal life is my personal life and my children and my very dear friends, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share my feelings about them with them. And, and we can talk about that offline, but, but not here. Uh, but in terms of my, uh, my writing influences, um, Henry Louis Mencken, the sage of Baltimore, who predicted maybe 100 years before that one day the office of the presidency will be, will be occupied by a complete and total moron. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he never, he never uh, lost when he bet on people going to their own basest instincts. And he used to, you know, in his writings, he would try to caution the uh, bourgeoisie about, you know, the baseness of the people and that we're shooting too high over their heads. Um, and again, almost 100 years later, I, I think those writings are, are profound and prophetic. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut could just find the surreal and everything. And I could find the surreal in so many of those things, like I said during this, this, this podcast, about how many things repeat themselves and how we keep feeling doomed to keep repeating history. It's ridiculous. And then last, Tim Russert, um, you know, always, you know, wanting to know what Mr. and Mrs. America were going to ask about whatever issue at their dinner table. You know, I, I always called that when I wrote my blog, you know, about an issue, what would be, what would be the things Mr. and Mrs. Howard County would want to know? And I started with that premise. And if I had, if it was a premise I believed in, and I had information to support that premise, then that's what I wrote. You know, there are some blog posts that I wrote where, eh, I'm kind of half-hearted buying what I'm writing. And I decided early on, I needed to trash the hat. I needed to write about things that I believed in, not report what was being told to me by somebody or another. And that made my writing better. So those are those three, uh, those are those three uh, influences on my, on my writing. Well, that that's awesome. And, and, and Bill, um, again, you know, th this has been a great conversation, Bill and Jason, obviously the, the three of us being able to get together is always a good thing, but for this, uh, topic. It's been awesome. Um, again, as I've said in reading it, uh, it I, I like to call this book, you know, the history of Howard County through one man's eyes. Um, so, you know, for those of you who think, oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, blog posts where Bill's, you know, you know, blowing smoke about this, that, and the other, it really is tied closely to history of Howard County and quite frankly to Maryland because he uh, touches into a few other counties. Uh, you have to read the book to see how he, uh, discusses issues of Baltimore City, County, and, and Arundel County. So uh, there's a lot to unpack there, and obviously statewide. Um, I found, always found it interesting that uh, nobody saw Hogan coming till early 2014. I always thought that was an interesting aside, because reading your 13 stuff, I was like, where's Hogan? Where's Hogan? Where's Hogan? I was like, oh, there he is. Um, but anyway, a great history lesson. Uh, Jason, anything uh, that you want to add to any of that? Uh, no, I just want to make sure that, uh, and I know you said it hasn't been published yet, but is there any other information you can provide as far as be on the lookout for links or any, anything we should know about in terms of uh, if you're interested in purchasing these fantastic books? Oh, yes. Uh, I will definitely provide links far and wide uh, through my social media presences, not just the Forward Maryland page, but my own personal Facebook page. Uh, uh, also, um, also, it's going to be, uh, you know, the ebooks and the hard copy books. Um, I'm using a, a publishing, a sell, it's a self-publishing company called Book Baby. And uh, they are putting me on Amazon and Goodreads and all the worldwide distribution networks. So as those, uh, as those, uh, as those networks become activated, I'll be certain to pass along that information. And I am hoping, I am talking with local booksellers and will be talking soon to some uh, local entities about, you know, doing some presentations, uh, maybe doing a talk or two in the county uh, about uh, matters of, uh, of historical import to Howard County during those Halkeon aughts and tens. <laughs> well, 
Well, Bill, I got to tell you, usually for those uh, book talks, there are moderators and uh, I don't know about Jason, but I certainly would volunteer to moderate that conversation. Because <laughs> I love it. I it love it. I'm tell both of you guys before, before you cut me off, because I know that guy who does the recording has his finger on his button, on the button, because he's going <laughs> to knock me off any time. This is the last damn time I'm going to be on this podcast. I'm telling both of you this right now. This is the last time I'm going to be a guest here. This has been awesome. <laughs> is there a problem with the green room? This has been absolutely awesome. They were not all tan M&Ms. There were some brown ones in there. I said specifically the tan ones only. <laughs> Plus also, I think we only have about eight more episodes of this podcast left. So mm. Catering is fired. So anyway, uh, again, great conversation. Exciting. Uh, again, Bill, the release date? Uh, not firm, but uh, I'm going to shoot for uh, May the 24th. Okay, everybody out there, May 24th. I'm sure we'll be mentioning this again as we get close to our final episode of Ford Maryland. Um, amazing that Again, with your book and podcast, over 200 podcasts and thousands of, of posts, it's, it's pretty insane how much you've put into this. Um, I, the num When I saw those numbers, I got blown away. Like, here's number 1,000. I'm like, I'm only in 2012. <laughs> so just wait until we figure out how to put the podcast up and monetize that, Steve. Oh, okay. I'll look forward to that. So, so everybody, again, thank you for indulging the three of us in, in this conversation. Really appreciate Bill for serving as guest for the night. Jason, absolutely appreciate you for serving in the role of guest host. Uh, this was my official first time semi running the show, although I don't have my finger on the button. So hopefully, uh, you know, this podcast will, will, will go through and, uh, Everybody will enjoy listening to it. And again, you know, buy the book when it comes out in you know late May. It is an excellent read and, and a, a real history lesson. So um, you guys try did an awesome job answering me, asking me questions. And I did learn after about 20 minutes to stop talking so much. Well, we appreciate that, Bill. Uh, we, we, we try to do our best. So anyway, everybody, for our very special guest, Mr. Bill Woodcock, and for co-host Jason Booms, I'm Steve Hunt, and you have been watching or listening to another and yes, special episode of Ford Maryland. Have a good evening, everybody. And as Bill would say, take care. <laughs>